Welcome to Material Works. I'm going to show you how this entire add-on works from start to finish. Whenever you open a Blender scene, once Material Works is installed, you're first going to go here into the end panel and access the Material Works tab over here. Now, once you've loaded in your library, which has installation instructions after you purchase, you're going to have access to all 50 of these hard surface materials. So all you do is you load them into Blender, takes a couple of seconds, and you're going to have all of these accessible here in this menu. So let's say, for example, I wanted to add an aluminum, okay? Now before we do that, let's make sure we're in cycles mode. We're going to go up here to rendering. And you're going to see we can't actually see anything right now. That's because there's no lights in the scene. With Material Works, we have six realistic HDRIs that come included with the plugin. So all you need to do is click on this button right here, and you can choose between different types of HDRIs here. I'll stick with the default one. Now, if we just select the object, go here, and then click on Aluminum, for example, you're going to see this is going to add in our aluminum material. Now, usually what I do at this point is I add in a bevel using hard ops, or you can just add in a bevel modifier. So I'll just quickly add in a bevel. Now, another thing you can do with this plugin is you can actually add in a bevel shader. The difference between a bevel modifier and a shader is that a bevel shader is not a real bevel. So you're going to see it kind of breaks apart if I increase the width too much. And you can kind of see if you zoom in, you still see that hard edge. That's because it's a fake bevel. So you can use this for your projects if you just want to save time. But usually what I do is I use a physical bevel modifier. It just looks a lot better in my opinion. Now let me go ahead and show you how all these different settings work. First of all, of course, you can go up here and you can swap between all the different materials. We have camo, we have plastics, we have metals, uh, we have all sorts of different materials. Pretty much anything you would see in real life, we have available here in this panel. And you can also sort it by a category up here. Next, let me show you what the blend mode does. So there are two different types of projections in Blender. You have UV projection, which uses UV coordinates, and you also have procedural projection. The default setting in Material Works is set to procedural projection. Okay, so we're not using any sort of UV coordinates. However, if we swap this to UV, we actually are able to use a UV projection for this particular texture. So this can be useful for game asset workflows and things like this where you need actual UV coordinates. So let me quickly just use a smart UV project just to save time. And you're going to see whenever I do this, not only is the material a bit lower resolution, which isn't a big deal because you can always scale it, but the main issue here is we have very visible seams. See that? What procedural mode is going to do is it's going to blend all of these seams together and use that default resolution. So for example, if I were to set this little slider here and drag that to zero, you're going to actually see we have very visible seams on the object. But with procedural mode, all we need to do is increase the slider and that's going to blend those seams together. You're not going to be able to see them at all. The default setting is 0.2 and I would recommend leaving that setting on 0.2 as well. Next, we have a few different settings here. I would recommend leaving normal, roughness, and metallic on the default values. I would not recommend touching these. The reason is these materials already have the pre-built settings, so you don't need to do anything. But if for some reason you wanted to remove the normal information, you could do that. You can also adjust the roughness to make it reflective or more rough, and you can also adjust the metallic values. But again, I would not recommend touching these values here leave them on the default. Another cool thing you can do is you can actually incorporate some color. So for example, if I wanted to give it a hint of green, I don't know why you would do this, but if this was green and I slightly increase the slider, now we get a nice hint of green on the top of the material. I don't use this too often, but it can be useful if you want a bit more customization. I've already shown you what the bevel option does. That will just add a procedural bevel. Like I said, I just prefer to use a physical bevel. The next one is my favorite, which is the wear and tear feature. This is one of the most powerful settings inside of Material Works. So if we click on this button, this is just going to add different wear and tear elements. So what I'm going to do is click on this arrow. And the first thing we can do is adjust the strength right here. This will basically adjust the opacity. You can make it very light or you can make it very strong. 
Another option we have here are the different types of uh, scratches and things like that. So for example, I could change this to version B, which is a little bit of a different version, version C, version D. And some of these you might need to adjust the strength as well. Some of them are a little bit heavy, so you can do that. And then we also have version E. So feel free to go in here, choose the version you want, and you can adjust the strength settings as well. You're also going to notice an option here for edge. Now, in order to use this, we actually need a hard defined edge, but this is a sphere, so we don't have one. So what I'm going to do is just add in a cube. We'll add in a bevel there. We'll put the aluminum back on just like that. And then I'm just going to go here to the wear and tear once again, and I'm going to show you how this edge information works. So if I click on edge, what this is going to do is constrain that wear and tear to the edges, the convex surface only. Now we can't see too much right now and that's because when we're using this setting, we need to go in here and we need to increase the samples a little bit, maybe to five or six. And on top of that, you need to adjust the width. That's gonna kind of make the wear and tear branch out a little bit. Now I would not recommend using this feature on any of the other ones except for the actual edge wear. Uh, materials here, okay? So if you're gonna actually use edgeware, I would highly recommend using the actual edgeware. So if I swap this over, now we have the actual edgeware materials that are gonna look more realistic. So what I can do in here is increase the samples a bit, increase the width, and you're gonna see this is actually gonna look a lot better in terms of uh, edge wear and tear. I can go to version B, for example, you can go to version C, and you can kind of you know play with the strength, play with the width, and things like that. So basically that's gonna branch out from the edge. So it's gonna start at the edge and branch outwards, okay? I'll be honest, I only use this feature maybe 10 or 20% of the time, but it can be useful. Let's go back to another example. Let's change this to dust, for example. This is basically just going to add a layer of dust. Now I need to just increase the strength here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna collapse that and you can kind of go in here and adjust the strength, but you're gonna see nothing happens. Make sure you turn off the edge feature if you're not using the edge feature, okay? A lot of people make this mistake. Just make sure that is turned off in gray. And then you can kind of go in here and you can see now I have a nice layer of dust right on top of the surface. And we have all sorts of different types of dust. And you can kind of go in here and just adjust the strength of those. We also have different things like smudges, for example, fingerprints. You can kind of see we have some fingerprints on the surface. You can go in here. We also have scratches, so you can kind of make some scratches and just go through the different variations here. There's only two for scratches because you don't need that many. And that's basically how this feature here works. This will add wear and tear and also add edge generation to your object. Finally, we have HDRIs. I've already shown you this. This is basically just different realistic lighting setups that you can use in your scenes. Some of them look different. Some of them look better than others. It just depends on how you want your particular scene to look. So feel free to play with these. Figure out which HDRI looks best for your scene. Uh, but for example, I'm just going to use this default one right here. And now for the best and also the newest feature of MaterialWorks. This allows compatibility with the decals in trim sheets. And if you're not familiar with what these do, decals are essentially stickers that you apply to your model, while trim sheets are more or less like a textured tape that you wrap around your model. And I'll show you exactly what these do here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load in um, one of our decals here from our decal in trim sheet pack. If you do not have this pack, you can add it to your order in the pricing card below. Just get the more expensive version and you'll get a nice discount on our decal in trim sheet pack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go to one of these decals for example, and you're gonna see that now the decal information will also share the same information as the material here. So for example, you can see the aluminum here is actually being picked up by the decal. Pretty cool. I'm gonna use another example with a sphere just because in my opinion, the sphere looks a bit better when I'm projecting the decals. So I'm gonna go here to aluminum once again. And let's add in maybe a decal just like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to project it onto the surface. 
And just like that, we have realistic looking detail in a matter of seconds that also shares the same exact material from MaterialWorks. Beforehand, this wasn't possible, and it's also not possible with any other plugin like this on the market. So that's exactly what this new feature does. On top of that, we can also do this with trim sheets. So for example, if I go in here and I add in a trim sheet detail, I'm just gonna go into decal machine, and maybe I'll just choose this trim sheet. What's gonna happen is it's actually going to share the same material with the trim sheet as well. Beforehand, before this update, this wasn't possible. The material looked completely different, but now it actually shares the same information as material work. So let's just find a cool one here for demonstration, maybe something like this. And then if we zoom in, you can see that this trim sheet detail also has the aluminum applied to it. So you don't have to model in tiny details like this anymore. You can use the decals and trim sheets with material works to get these realistic details in just a few seconds. So that's material works. That is how it works. This is going to seriously change the quality of your work in a matter of seconds. You click a few buttons, you make some adjustments to it, and just like that, you're gonna have realistic details added onto your models, just like you can see on the screen here. This is the single best investment you can make if you're doing any sort of 3D work in Blender. So again, to pick up your copy, you can read more about the plugin below and also place your order below as well.